Okay, everybody, welcome to COT. We are here yet again today. You guys know what today is, right? Revelation briefing. Listen, I'm going to be blunt. Can I be blunt? Forthcoming, all that good stuff tonight. I'm expecting some, uh, well, major disruptions in a few weeks. I know it's quite soon for everything, but in a few weeks, I'm expecting some major disruptions. I would ask you guys a courtesy and uh, your leniency in allowing me to uh, uh, let that unfold by way of information uh, so that's not floating all over the Internet before I've finished the entirety of what it's all about. We live in very unstable times, very, very deceitful times. It looks one way. Something else is happening right now. Some, you know, things are happening right now. And uh, most folks have a almost a discernment dullness. It's not, it's not your fault, right? It's not a fault. It's that you, most people are preoccupied with uh, so many different tasks. It's very difficult to focus on any one thing. And the current condition of things is not very, it's not a good situation. It really isn't. I, I do anticipate a major breakout in about a couple of weeks. That I do. I will clarify most of that uh, by writing. Of course, we're going to have to, we're going to have a heart to heart uh, talk about that. That's a two week window. We're going to have a talk, uh, heart to heart on that. And, um, because I want you guys prepped mentally, right, for what's about to happen, which means it, it looks, it really does look like nothing is happening. It really does look that way. It saves some uh, major magma and tectonic movements that are about to take place in a few hours um, in, in two places of the world. But other than that, and of course, the sun is, continues to change. Uh, but everything looks somewhat, you know, normal. It is not normal. It's not. It is very important that people are tuned in uh, spiritually so that you're not caught off guard. Because one thing we do know, there are many different interpretations of prophecy, correct? Many different interpretations. No one can can come to the forefront and say, I'm right, over everybody else. No one can do that. Right, the Lord knows exactly what He gave us. It would do us, uh, you know, a great justice if we could uh, be mindful of the prophecies, but but not to be the expert on what's about to unfold. Here's why. Here's why. There are too many unknowns. Too many. Most people know about animals, right? Bugs, microbes, um, you know, small life forms on the planet. And, of course, human beings, right? Very few people know about the atmospheric life forms that are up there. We're not talking about ET. We're talking about atmospheric life forms that uh, most people will have little to no idea exist in the first place. Second, a manifestation event, you could say, has already taken place. Many are paying the price for it. Um, th there's an entire army in the earth right now, that is not of the brethren. It is not of humanity, period. And they're taking up positions, which means there are certain areas of the earth that are going to be under very heavy influence of these uh, others. I'm going to call them others. And we're not talking about spiritual beings. No, nope, we're talking about flesh and blood and, and something else, just like you and I, but a bit different with a little more know-how. That's what we're talking about. Manifestation. So we're not talking about something that's bound in the spirit realm that cannot interact with you physically. It's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about something that can walk through a wall. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about something that will, you know, tear the whole wall off, right? Something like that. For a long time, the Lord has separated. Uh, his decree was, we are not to be touched, right? That was his decree. But we know in the end times, what happens? Man begins to invite iniquity into his life. 
It is practiced more and more. In the Bible, it says that the, the selected individuals of, of humanity who are taken over by darkness will cause craft to prosper. Well, we know what craft is, right? Craft is not that word, by the way. Many people may interpret that as witchcraft, right? Uh, but no. Craft is more like a discipline. Right? That's what craft is, more like a discipline. In fact, let's go there. Can we do that? Craft. He'll call his craft to prosper in his hand. When we uh, read that, the book of Daniel, if we go back to the book of Daniel, I believe it's in uh, chapter 8. Let's, let's go to chapter 8 and see. In the book of Daniel, chapter 8, he'll call his uh, as 8, uh, 25, by his cunning, he shall make deceit prosper under his hand. You see that? See that? Now, I'm utilizing a different version of the Bible. The reason why, let me, let me use this one. I'm going to read it to you this way. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper. This word craft that's being used, right, is political workings. It's just like politics, right? Uh, some of the definitions of that is, uh, you know, falsehoods, guile. Uh, subtility, right, treachery, things like that, bad things, um, ideas that are politically negative, that work in the system of men deceitfully, right, that draw men down into more iniquitous deeds, like passing policies, right, to allow a child to go under the knife to change their sexual orientation. That's craft, right? You don't allow a five-year-old to do that, right? So, in the Bible, it says this, and through his policy, also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace, he shall destroy many. This word peace is akin to abundance, and through abundance, you know, in the world, they have a message. What is it? What is it? What is it? Peace and security, right? We need peace and security. Every, the, in fact, the entire agenda that people tend to talk about are of two things, and it amazes me every time I hear it. Um, every subject they discuss has to do with two topics. Prosperity, right? Prosperity and security. Everything is about prosperity and security. Haven't you noticed that? The border conversation is about what? Security, isn't it? The financial realm is about what? Prosperity, correct? Every message a politician has, for at least for the last 15 years, has been about peace and security. You know what the Lord said? When they say peace and safety, which, by the way, is peace and security. When they say peace and safety, which is, by the way, this word peace is akin to abundance. When they say abundance, when they say prosperity, right? When they say we have accomplished what we desire to do, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Why? Why then? Why not before then? Why? Does it have to come when they say peace and safety? Anybody know? Anybody? Why not before? Why is that the thing to look for? You know, what just so happens that during the time we live in now, that message of peace and security was absent all the other precedents. I, I think I was somewhat amazed when I went back and I tried to look for it. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. There have been many agendas of many different uh, presidential leaders around the world. This is the first time it's being unified by two things, peace and security. China, peace and security. Russia, peace and security. Europe, peace and security, right? Middle Eastern countries, peace and security. All of them are under the guise of peace and security. Now, because they're all talking about this, what does that mean? What do you see? What does it mean? Let me tell you what it means. It means something has gotten a hold of all of them. All of them. And they're speaking 
the words being spoken to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? An influence has touched all of them, and they're speaking the exact same thing. Haven't you noticed? They're speaking the exact same thing. Not only are they speaking the exact same thing, but they have the same excuses. See, in, in China, they're saying the West is too powerful. In order for us to have peace, we must build up our armies, be ready to subdue any of the um, uh, uh, extensions of the West or NATO. Russia says the exact same thing. We must have this land, and we must have that land, and we must have things in order in case the West or NATO starts to broaden or expand its borders. What does the EU say? Same thing. What does Britain say? Same thing. What does the United States say? Same thing. Everybody is saying the same thing. Why, all of a sudden, is everybody saying the exact same thing? Same spirits involved. One spirit touching all of them. And they're saying the exact same things. And they can't even see it. That's the funny part. They can't see it. They want the exact same thing. And everybody is speaking about that for their countries. That's never happened before. We were in World War II. That was not the message. That wasn't the message. Evil gives them that message. Do you know that? Evil does. And who is that evil one? Satan. Satan is the evil one. He is the influence working all in all these different ways to capture everything of mankind, to capture his trust, his direction, what he would do, to, to harness all of man's ambitions, and to redirect them into a specific path. There are things being done now that are just astounding. And if you know the word of God, you can't help but to see what they're saying and lining up perfectly with scripture. And it just so happens if you're a historian, you find out that it's the first time they have, you know, under with a unified voice, desired the same thing. Most countries had a very different message over time. Not now. Not now. Right? Not now. So it's good. This is good to know. This is good to identify at least one component that Satan is influencing these positions of power greatly. Now, we know in the book of Daniel, God appoints kings, correct? He appoints kings. But he also said this. For your sakes, here's how the Lord works, and this is why we have judges, and this is why we have police officers, and a police officer and a judge is going to act differently when you're involved versus somebody else. The Lord said, when you go before judges and things like that, the Lord is part of that happening. Do you know that? Even when you're uh, drugged to the courts, in the Bible it says, you know, you're going to be taken to prison for 10 days. Right now, I have my own. I, I can only see that one way. But um, if you were to go to court for something, the court is not going to be absolutely one hundred percent against you. Your father is going to be involved with whomever that judge is. Do you know that he said it would do that? That's why he said, "Submit yourselves to earthly authority," which does not mean you bow down to them. That's not what it means. That means you keep within the, the legalities of that land so long as they do not supersede what your father, right, has commanded you. But you guys know what I mean, right? Your father's in fault with police officers. Your father's in fault with judges, right? Your father is. He said he put them there on purpose to do what? To do what? For one, they work on your behalf when you have to go before them. But they also work for the purposes of him in the earth, right, during his absence. Which means you can have any judge. He does not have to be a Christian. The Lord can change that judge's heart, influence him greatly for your sakes. You live in the lands, correct? You live in these lands. Do you not know that your rights as being a believer 
have been protected by judges uh, 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 feverishly for a very long time. Do you know that? Right now, your rights are up in the air concerning faith. Faith is actually being assaulted. I'll say as of today. As of today, some things were introduced. It is the first assault on faith. The first assault. These are policies that are coming out because everything is changing all around you. Everything is changing. But your father is still involved. Never forget that. Don't forget that. Don't freak out when some law comes out and you're not allowed to tell somebody that they can only make it through Christ Jesus. Don't freak out when that happens. Continue to do what the Lord instructed you to do. I'll give an example of something in China. Lots of places in China, they cannot listen to uh, a lot of things, right? They can't. Do you not know that we've been reaching people in China since 2009? Isn't that funny? 2009. 2009. In fact, we had quite a few things devoted to folks in certain areas so that we could talk to them. You still have to obey the laws of the land, right? You still have to. But the Lord will always make a way for a person to communicate certain things. Always. Always, always, always. Somebody said, Mr. BBB333 said an asteroid is going to hit Utah in October. I can't, um, well, I can't really pinpoint anything like that yet. I could know about it. I'm not, here, here's why. Suppose I knew for a fact that New York City was about to be attacked and that at least three quarters of that city were going to burn Suppose I knew that. A lot of people will say, well, you got to tell everybody. Here's the problem. If I tell everybody that and give them, suppose I give them my, my own personal information. I say, guys, you, you got about a month and that's going to take place, right? And, you know, they're just sitting there watching. Many people will walk to see if something is going to happen, right? Then imagine all of a sudden at the 30 day mark, boom. Kapoof, you know what would happen? Here's what would happen. Lots of people would attempt to hear me and attempt to extract dates for me and attempt to extract future happenings. So much so, I couldn't even talk about the word of God. People would argue and try to alter the subject. It would be anarchy and everything else, right? It would. If somebody foretells something accurately like that, they're going to draw everybody to themselves, right? People are going to forget about the Lord. They're going to be interested in the person. They will. And if that person, right, uh, if that person accommodates that type of attention, they're going to start a cult. That's what they're going to do, right? If I knew something so precise, the Lord has never given me instruction to ever be precise. In fact, I was given a warning. A long, long time ago, right? That if you're ever right a few times in a row, you're, you're going to have a very difficult life from that point forward, right? So I take the humble path, I do, the humble path. Plus, I've noticed something else. If you absolutely know something that's going to happen, and the Lord did not give you permission to tell anybody, and you tell it anyway, the very next day, nobody remembers that you said it. Nobody. Nobody. There, there have been things here that I kind of, kind of popped out of my mouth, but I wasn't supposed to tell anybody. And, and, um, but it just kind of faded away. There was one thing I said one day, and it happened the next day, and I said it was going to happen the next day, but only three people remembered. And I was very thankful. I was. In other words, who in their right mind who's following Christ would desire to be glorified for any reason? above the Lord their God in this earth. Who? Who would do, who would work for the kingdom, labor for the kingdom and the people of the kingdom, and then, and then want everybody to look at them for all the answers? 
I personally do not want that, right? I don't. I know that whatever God gives me, he'll give you two. He'll give you two. Somebody says, how are we going to know the two witnesses? They will be revealed. They will be. A lot of people have their idea on who the two witnesses are, right? I, I take things into account like this, right? Like this. And and listen to me. I, I don't, um, I just have to go with what the Lord gives me. But I know a lot of people from the time when I was small to this very day, people have said Elijah has to come back because it was it was already foretold that Elijah would come back. Right. But see, Jesus told everybody that Elijah came back and they chopped his head off. You know who he was speaking about, right? You guys know who he's speaking about? He was speaking about John the Baptist. But Elijah had already come back and turned the hearts of the children back to the father and the father to the children. You know that? As John, this is what Jesus said. And Jesus said, you chopped his head off. But John, John said, they said, are you Elijah? John said, no. So John had no idea who he was. But he operated in what? The spirit of Elijah. He did. He had already come back. And people couldn't even see it. Keep in mind, how, how come they didn't even know that the Savior was coming to this earth that would be born on this earth? How could all the experts Miss that. I'll tell you how. Are you ready? Are you ready? Didn't you read the arguments they had in the New Testament? Every time Jesus spoke, they said, wait a minute. When the Messiah comes, he's supposed to do this, and he's supposed to do that. They had so many supposed tos, they couldn't even see the manifestation right before them. They were spiritually blinded. Why? Because they believed in their own word at that moment. They weren't believing in God's word. They weren't looking for God's word. They were proud of what they had established that looked like God's word. And that's what they followed, which was not God's word. That's why they could not recognize Jesus. Because they were believing their own interpretations above the revelation God gives to all. All they had to do was wait and have things revealed. That's it. See, when you, when, whenever us humans, when we think we have the answer, we're already in ego and pride and everything else. My favorite phrase, right, is let every man be a liar, let God's word be true. That's a very tough phrase, but I love it. The Lord will reveal things when it's time for things to be revealed. He'll do it in perfect timing. We're just impatient. A lot we are. We're impatient. If Elijah came back, and he was John the Baptist, just like Jesus said, God said something in the book of Revelation. Do you guys remember what he said? He said something we just can't discount. And I'm not, you know, with the theologians on this at all. I'm sorry. I'm just not. I'm not. I, I can't say I'm with the theologians. They can scarcely believe in things themselves. But there was a man in the Bible, John, was told to do what? He was told to eat a book. And that book in his mouth was going to be sweet as honey, bitter in his belly. But that was told somewhere else. See, every time a book is eaten, a person is filled with prophecy. They are. They're filled with prophecy. Right? Every time they do this. But the Lord said, do not, don't write down what those seven thunders uttered. Do not repeat you know, what you have. You hold it. And then he said, you're going to have to prophesy before many peoples and nations again. He told John that. That he was going to have to prophesy before kings. He was going to have to prophesy before nations and people and everything else again. He told him that. Well, How does he fit into these end times? Anybody know? Anybody know? How does he fit in? See, God told specifically two people that they had to come back and do something. He did. I don't really discuss it because it just creates an argument. It just creates an argument. 
I never discussed. God told them they had to come back. But they had to come back. God said that. Right? See, there's one thing about the Word of God. You don't have to speculate. Just become a student. And the Lord has already named things. It's just that a lot of it is sometimes either people have not read it or they don't want to receive it. But an idea in the world is popular. Right? People just skip over things and they, they kind of, it, it's very difficult sometimes to remember something once your mind is imprinted with things. Also, sometimes people, you, you can respect a person so much, but if you're not careful, you're going to hear them above the Lord your God. Never make that mistake. You better not. Listen, if you respect me, then fine. Do not hear me above the Lord your God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do not do that. Don't sit up there and say, well, Mike said this. No, keep your mind clear and open. You may understand my position. You may hear what I say, but do not live your life by what I say. You live your life by what the Messiah says. That's very important. Because if you live your life by what I say, it's the blind leading the blind. See, every human being is somewhat spiritually blind. And if you follow that human being and they fall into a ditch, you're going to be right behind them. Don't do that. You follow the Messiah. That way, if your brother falls into a ditch, you can say, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Let me give you a hand and hoist you up. Right? Be that type of individual in the world. Keep your eyes on the Messiah. In this world, people glorify men. Let's go ahead and face it. They glorify men. I'm going to go ahead and say it. They glorified Obama. They glorified Clinton. They glorified Trump. They did. They glorified Biden. They did, too. They glorify men. Anybody they like to glorify, they justify. They do. And they have messages that back that up. I'm not going to do that. Because I will never glorify men. Do you know why? Because that does nothing but hurt men when you glorify them. When you do that, you hurt them. Do you know why? You know why? Because as much as you can respect a person, should they ever lead you or steer you in the wrong direction, that with the same level of respect you had, you're going to have that same level of contempt for them. Once you find out you have fallen because of them. I let people, I'll never have that problem because my trust is in the most high and I'm free to love my brother. I'm free to love them. They, they, they can do anything they want to do, but I'm free to love them. My life is not going to be hinged on a person. Don't do that to yourselves. You're in the days where men worship men. Men are more, they're lovers of self more than God. These are scriptures and we're right in the middle of those days. Scriptures. Somebody said people deify Trump, they deify Obama too. Can't they see what the Lord did? The Lord appoints kings. He appointed Obama. He appointed Trump. He appointed Biden. He did. He appointed them. All you have to do is look and you can see their clear purpose. If the Lord does what he does for the redemption of his children, then take another look at what they're doing. And you'll see the only way to cause a child of the living God to get away from the sin they're in is to cause them to get caught in their sin by their own eyes. In other words, God will make you see your own sin through the deeds of others. Do you know that? How many of you have looked at something somebody did, and before you could comment, you thought to yourself, oh my goodness, I did that same thing. Lord, forgive me. Let me get myself straight. Or something minor that you were involved with. All of a sudden, somebody else. It became a big deal. People got hurt. You said, oh, my Lord, thank you, Jesus, for delivering me from that. Thank you for opening my eyes. That's what happens when you're aware, when you're attempting, attempting, attempting to follow the Messiah. You begin to wake up in so many different areas. You cease to be a man worshiper and follower. You start looking to the Messiah, and then everything starts to become visible, very clear. You don't take one side or the other. You stand for what the Lord stands for. You stand for the kingdom of God. You're a citizen of the kingdom of God, but you're in the earth to affect change in somebody's life regarding redemption. 
forgiveness, all those attributes of Christ. You're in the days where people will lose themselves. If they're going to find out they've been worshiping devils. Things have already happened, and because this is the Revelation brief, let me let me let me pull out something else. See, because when there are unknown elements, everybody has an idea of something until an unknown element takes place. Oh, by the way, what's going to happen when a continent is cracked in half and part of it's missing? You think that's going to change how people uh, uh, look at prophecy? You better believe it. <clears throat> what is the oldest landmass in the world? Anybody know? Well, what men say is the oldest landmass in the world. Anybody know? Does anybody know what the oldest landmass in the world is? That old landmass is going to crack in half. It's going to crack in half. Do you know what else? Every foundation of every country is about to be exposed. Oh, not just one or two. Every foundation. It's going to happen literally. Do you know that? You know some of these promises from these weird psychics and everything else and what they say, this and the other? Satan will attempt to take what he knows of the Messiah and pervert it. Do you know that? Who pervert it? Somebody said Antarctica. Well, that's speculative. It's all speculative. It is. But Africa, right, is part of the oldest inhabited land masses we know about. I know a lot of people think there's a wall or something around Antarctica. I never saw it. I've been up there where we flew into Antarctica from a very odd angle and ran into two magnetic anomalies. And some of you folks who were in the Air Force, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was no wall. There was no nothing. There was a cold, big mess. That's what it was. And when you see it from high altitude, you really get a picture of the whole you really get that picture sure there's a reason that they keep people right that air traffic is traveling in a specific direction the book of enoch describes it quite well it's just that it cannot be believed until you can see it from that angle it cannot be believed and 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 i, I would say Hundreds of thousands of people know about it. Hundreds of thousands of people know about it. So they know about the weather, which is why they can, they can do things with impunity, which is why they're not affected like you are, because they have seen things you couldn't possibly believe. I want you guys to take note of something. A lot of these folks have seen the truth of this earth and the truth of the heavens and the truth of what's beneath the earth. So they have a type of confidence and what they're doing. It's almost like they're unshaken, right, by, by what most people entertain. But they're frightened to death of things you wouldn't believe. Why? Because they have seen the world from a different perspective. And it's no longer speculation. It is quite mind-blowing. It is by no means boring. And it also lets, have you ever noticed, right, that everybody who goes into space, or let's just say everybody that goes into low low orbit, they always come back, and they know that somebody has engineered this earth. That they'll always tell you that you say, "Well, do you believe in life out there?" They'll say, "There has to be life out there." Do you know why? Because of the earth, because of what they have seen here, not because of what they heard out there, not because of what they saw out there. It's because of what they have seen here, how the weather functions and operates. When they see that stuff, they know they know there's a higher form of life out there. And what they're really saying is this, there is a, th this earth is intelligently designed. Intelligently designed, right? Somebody says, is the, is, is, uh, Mike is space a vacuum or a super fluid? No, it's not fluid. It's not fluid. No, it's not fluid. Actually, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, it's quite beautiful, but it's not fluid. It's not fluid. Um, the nature of things, right, is, is not the barrier you would think. But here's the problem. Not everybody can go up into the heavens. Not everybody can do that. In fact, 
Anybody who's going to go up there to a specific altitude must be counseled uh, months before they ever go up there. Because they have to, they have to understand what they're about to do. Right? They really have to understand what they're about to do. And just anybody can't go up there. When your eyes see certain things, right? If you have no context for them, you will go crazy. You will. You'll go absolutely cuckoo. Most of the people who have been to space have a hard time holding it together from time to time. And they have to really uh, uh, assert themselves. So they won't go absolutely bonkers and cuckoo. Because this created earth is extraordinary. It really is extraordinary. And we mimic a lot of what the Father has done. We do. We mimic that. Um, but clearly, things are in a perfect order. Not an organic order. Not, not as you would see organics. Well, look at your own body. Your body is a snapshot of the totality of existence. And you don't even know it. If you would study your body in truth, I mean really study your body, you would be blown out of your socks to find out how your body functions, how it operates, what it generates, what it can and cannot do on a daily basis, how it compensates, the miraculous things. It can transmute metals and everything else based upon what you need. It is constantly carrying out what you decree for it to carry out. It's under your command. But it's running all by itself. It does not need you to operate. It doesn't. And the same principles you find within the body are also found out there. They're found out there. Right? And mankind has done a lot more than what you think. And when that's exposed, when that is cleared up, that's going to really shut down much, many theories. Most theories will die in one day. They'll die in one day. In fact, folks, I'm telling you right now, when people see one thing, they're, they're not going to be able to believe it. Why? Because they have already talked themselves out of receiving any truth in that area. They already have. How many people have been into space? How many people have been out there? Right? Didn't matter if it's low orbit where the, uh, shell, where the uh, space stations are. Didn't matter. But have you been in the space? Because if you have, you have seen the earth. If you've seen the earth, you've also seen the earthly anomalies that take place on a continuous basis. And there are some other things that you have seen, right? But most people have not been to space. Here's my question. How can a person who's never been up there to see anything be an expert on space? How does that happen? We get fooled so much, don't we? We have experts of Pluto. How can somebody be an expert of Pluto? And Saturn, everything we knew about Saturn was turned upside down. See, when something is real bad, they keep it within the intelligence community. They classify it. it turns into, you know, dark project file cabinet. They do. And everybody just goes on thinking the way they did because it makes them happy and comfortable. Right? Hmm? You're going to see it for yourselves. You will. You'll see it for yourselves. Our atmosphere is not going to hold up for as long as you think. You're going to see it for yourselves. You will. Now, back to my thought I was having. I'm going to read some of you guys. This is in the book of Revelation. I'm going to read something. Let's go ahead and uncover some things here tonight. Let's uncover some things here. We're going to dig. We're going to uncover something. I like reading this one, by the way. I'm in the book. Of Revelation, of course. And I know that you guys have lots of ideas in the book of Revelation. I don't really read Revelation to solve anything. I don't do that. I'm aware of things in Revelation, but I'm not trying to solve anything. I'm just not the guy for that. I never tried to do that. I want you guys to see something, though. First of all, you ready for this? And the angel said unto me, I'm in Revelation 17, verse 7. And the angel said to me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? 
I'll tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. They that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life, from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Stop. Uh-oh. We got a problem. Let me read that one more time. You didn't catch it. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not. Right? And it shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, which is doomed. And they that dwell on the earth, who? They that dwell on the earth, who? They that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So wait a minute, let me, let me paint this picture for you. When people behold the beast that was, yet is, but is not, right? The beast that was and is not, when they view this beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit and goes into perdition, those that dwell on the earth, that's us. Those that dwell on the earth, that's us. Those that dwell on the earth are going to wonder whose names were never in the book of life from the foundations of the world. What does that mean? If your name is not in the book of life, from the foundation of the world, you're not human, are you? You're not, you're just not one of God's created, are you? You're not part of the natural creation and order of the Most High. So when they behold the beast that was, that used to be, but is not anymore, but will ascend out of the bottomless pit. When they behold it, that means they're going to see it. Now, now, let me, let me, they're going to see a beast that no longer exists. How do you do that? Remnants, bones, findings. When they behold the body of something that used to be alive, but is not alive anymore in the flesh, when they behold it, the beast that used to be, but is not now, but will ascend out of the bottomless pit. Which means there's a promise coming of this thing, but it used to exist a long time ago. Stay with me. When they behold it, that's when they'll start to wonder whose names. They're going to wonder. Those that dwell on the earth, which is us human beings, are going to begin to wonder whose names were never written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. They're going to start to wonder, did I come from that? Now, let me ask you guys something. If they extracted a body and they had that body in a futuristic capsule right now right and they were going to display that to the world would that change the interpretation of this when the world sees it when everybody sees it that's going to make things all too real isn't it and then people are going to wonder of what lineage am I am I really a human being or am I Part of that lineage. I'll tell you right now. It's just my belief. That's precisely what they're going to do. They're going to line up all over the world. They're going to. This thing. The, the sight of, of, of something in a capsule. Is going to be seen by everybody on the face of the earth. Data. Upon data, upon everything is there. And, you know, we just, we can extract DNA now. We, we can tell where something has come from. We can tell what something is akin to. We can tell it. We can extract things. And we can do analytical dissections of information bound within the DNA of something that was living. 
And, you know, they collected. Now, this is so interesting. They have already collected the DNA of the world. They've got your DNA. And if you didn't directly submit your DNA, somebody in your family did. So they have your DNA. So that means the only way you can tell if you're not of a human lineage is by what? DNA. It's almost impossible to tell by the by. The entire world is going to be captivated by this, and they will wonder. Now, the Bible says they're going to wonder. They're going to think about. They're going to question themselves and say, wait a minute. Am I a human being, or did I come from that? Is that my forefather? Is that what I'm from? See, things are really about to change. Why do you think they're, you know what, my opinion on this UFO stuff, it's uh, the UFO topic is not the important topic. The UFO topic is to gauge how you react. Based on the reactions of the world thus far, people are ready for a higher level, a higher level of involvement, of seeing what what this earth is really about. And take notice, ghost stories, ghost shows, UFO shows are hand in hand and have taken over the airwaves. They're all over cable channels. They're all over the Internet. People have devoted a lot. And also, they have a budget. And also, it is supported by governments around the world. Did you not know the History Channel, the Discovery Channel, the Travel Channel, all these different channels? Where do you think they're getting funded to do all this stuff? And we talked about this. People of COT who are dusty. Dusty means you've been here for a while. I told you guys about the book that I was that I read. I told you about that book. I told you about the programming that was coming on the cable channels. I told you about that. See, because when I became aware of this, my stomach sunk. I knew it was coming for a while. But when you start reading the game plan, that's a different story. Don't ask me what book it was in. You can't buy that book. Do you know what happened? Because it was coming out that very next year, and it did. And they're still going. And have you noticed, you know, because there are certain people who will gauge these things. Anybody who gets federal funding, anybody who gets federal funding. And and just so you understand, federal funding is in more ways than one. Let's take the lottery, for example, right? When people buy tickets for the lottery, the money goes to the state, which goes back to the schools. Right. Under the agreement that they cannot, they, the schools cannot take up the curriculum of statistics that may cause a person not to play the lottery. Well, it could come out that way. Anyway, they do that. But you don't know who the people are that actually win the lottery. You don't know those people. Nobody ever gets to know those people. Right. They win. They, they go away. They have their smile and their check and they go away. You have no idea where all that money goes. But just imagine it went right back to some, you know, to some stamped dark projects, the whole thing. Just imagine that. The people are paying the states by way of the lottery to educate the children. And they're also paying to support certain projects. And that's something. And nobody complains. And everybody thinks they're going to win, so they'll never stop playing. They'll never stop playing. The same people who tell people, you know, if you got a gambling problem, call this number. The same people who are selling the lottery tickets. That makes no sense. I'm just trying to tell you how this world works and how people work and how they can laugh at people. The, the wise, people who think they're so wise and smart, they laugh at them. Because they're running circles around them. People are caught in their own knowledge. And the Lord does not want us like that. He didn't want us stuck on pause where we don't really know exactly what's going on. 
He would always have us, in the Bible it says God would make us aware. He would not have us ignorant of the devices of the enemy. He would not. We are to know exactly what Satan is doing. We're not to be ignorant concerning what Satan is doing. We're not. The Lord said he would not have us ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. And if he would not have us ignorant, ignorant means not knowing. You're not to be left in the dark regarding your adversary. You're to know exactly what he's up to. Because you're the only thing standing in the way of him and everything else. Do you know that? That's why you are to know what he's doing. The problem is people suffer with fear and panic and anxiety, and they're not telling anybody. And those are spirits. I know the world tells you something else, but those are spirits who have gotten quite comfy with many of you. Time to boot them out of your life, don't you think? So that you won't lose yourself by seeing anything. You're supposed to be able to sit and see anything in God's creation, good or bad. You are not to be moved. Why can't we do that? Because we have listened and believed mankind. That's why. Not knowing that mankind is influenced by Satan. So in essence, by believing humanity in their prideful and egotistical speech, we believe Satan. If you believe the world's message, you're believing Satan's message. Because God did not give us anxiety and fear and those things. He did not. You remember some of you when you learned, I remember, uh, what was it, back in, in one of those years, 2010, maybe? And a lot of people were talking about Department of Homeland Security put dots on the mailboxes, and they were coming to get people. Everybody was convinced. They said, oh, yeah, I saw the red dots and white dots and this dots. And it was it was horrible. It was bad. You couldn't even talk about Christ during those times because all people wanted to know about was is DHS coming to take all your weapons. And so I just, you know, in 2010, I did actually, I began to tell everybody, nobody's coming to take your weapons. Nobody is coming to seize your home. Nobody is doing any of that. And, of course, they would curse me out, but I kept saying it. Because I believe in the revelation of the Spirit, right? The truth, not this other stuff. Does it mean it can't happen? No, it means that was totally out of timing. That's what it means. By way of anxiety and fear. Because people locked on to a new story other than 2012 or building up to that crescendo. They believed yet another earthly theory. Why? Because it was brand new, because it was threatening, because it was like a movie, and many had heard it, and many capitalized on it. And people believed it, and they expected it. And if you told them it wasn't going to happen, they would get angry at you. The same person that was frightened, if you told them it was not going to happen, they would get angry at you. Why? Because the habits of people that utilize computers and all the social media stuff, they started to, you know, make money off stuff like that. It became very popular. It was like a way to talk about, you know, something you wanted to talk about. That's what YouTube was for. In fact, that's where the algorithms of YouTube came from were those years. That's where it was actually refined. And projects went forward to fine-tune YouTube to make it to what it is today. It's a, it's a very well-oiled machine, YouTube is. It is. Because it can cause a peaceful person to become an absolute somebody else in a very short time for the sake of likes. People discovered that they had a voice, that people would listen to that voice. All they had to do was speak something that would grab the attention of everybody else, and that's what they spoke. And so you have a lot of that on YouTube, right? But back there in that time, it became a nuisance. It did. It also became very tragic. Do you not know people died because of that anxiety? 
people, um, they missed their whole lives up because of that. There were a few people who had popped into COT. One person said they sold everything they had because they were they were sure that DHS was coming to get them and everything, and they were convinced of it. No DHS ever came. That person lost everything. Then it happened again and again, and it was very saddening. And then when that went away, people started believing in a Mayan prophecy. Satan really sowed some things in humanity, and things took off at that time. That's when it seems everything tilted and changed. And all of a sudden, we reach this day. And I'll tell you something. The same things people used to get excited about or anxiety about back in 2012, they should be thinking about right now. Right now. Somebody said, can you tell us something about the blue the blue world and a vision about the fiber circling above the dragon egg? It appeared that I have seen a star. Do you know something about it? All I would say is, I'll say this. When it comes to knowledge that's given to you outside of Christ, be careful. Be very careful. It's like a, it's like a swamp. Everything seems plausible and fascinating at times, right? But I will caution everybody, stay in the realm of truth as best you can. Because, see, a certain type of person is soon to wake up and rise in the earth. They're just human beings, but they don't respond like everybody else. They can be switched on and off like a light switch. And when that happens, there are going to be a lot of places under siege, unexpected siege, right? We're really in a countdown cycle, a very fast one. In some of these external stories, you've got to be careful. Also, something else. I know I have dreams a lot. Well, I don't dream a lot, but I dream the same dreams over and over. It's a plague to me. But I always encourage people. Just because I have dreams, even if every aspect of that dream came true, it does not mean that dream was from the Lord. Be, be very careful of that. Listen closely. The Lord said something in the book of Deuteronomy, and it means something quite clear. He said it would give a dream to a person, and that dream would come to pass. He said, and then after that, the same person who had that dream would ask the people who believed in the dream and saw it come to pass, they would say, hey, let us go and serve other gods. God said he would allow this and he would actually do this to see if you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. Do you know that? That's written in the Bible. How many of you don't know that? How many of you never heard that before? That's in the Bible. So please, I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, don't be impressed by dreams. Don't do that. Don't be, be impressed by the truth of the word of the Lord, right? That he has given you comprehension to start to see who the, who he is. Be thankful for the many he put in your life that will point you right back to the word of God, right? Be thankful for that. But don't be moved by dreams. Please don't be moved by dreams. I can have dreams, right? If they come to pass and they come to pass, it becomes a useful tool. Do not deify me by a dream. Don't lift me up because of a dream. Please don't do that. Don't do that. The world does not need another dreamer. The Messiah is what they need, right? Dreams can give guidance. Dreams can also be highly deceitful. Highly deceitful. Dreams can also be given by the evil one. Just so you understand that. Okay? So anyway, there is an actual scripture with that. Right? So when it's this question, the holes that have opened up in the world, 
like the one in China that you mentioned. Uh, they're drilling a hole in China. It says, will, wait a minute. Will super tall trees and grass and strange animals, if it's inside the earth, how does it get light? No, there are natural places in the earth, right, that have, they, they have uh, some sort of an ambient light thing going on inside the earth, right? Now, the one in China that they're going to show everybody, um, it is very deep. It is extremely deep. And it is the things that are extremely old. There's an, there's an entire island, no, three or four islands you guys have never heard of. They do exist. They are big ones about the size of Australia, right? It's an island the size of Australia. Have you ever seen Australia on a map? There's some big land masses in this world that nobody has ever heard of before. And they, they normally do that because these places, right? Do not, uh, they're not conducive of the idea of a specific nation. Remember something, when the maps were made, they were interested in nation building, right, in the optics of that specific nation. So when it comes to the size of continents on a map and the positioning of those continents on a map, they did so, so that if you're from, you know, England or something like that, you were looking at one of their maps, you would feel proud of your heritage. If you were from the USA, and of course they're building up things in the USA, they wanted USA to be the dominant nation in the earth. And so naturally, they made the USA look much bigger than what it actually is. Right? That's how they did South America is humongous. It's South America's huge. Mexico is huge. These places are huge. And they are disproportionate on a map. Just keep that in mind, right? If you find some of the older, older maps, put those in context and see them. They still don't get the dimensions right because, and that's why I said anybody who's been up in low orbit, they are just taken back by things they see. That's why you have to be prepared to go up there in the first place because you're going to see things that do not exactly match the narrative down here. That's why. You're going to see things are far out of context. Many things here that, that you look at here from an Earth point of view, right? They are warped, stretched, squeezed, whatever they have to do for their, for the sake of their own agenda. It, it's a, to believe in the world and everything in it is to be delusional. Very delusional, right? Some people, uh, they, they think because it's in a textbook or something like that, it has to be truth. No, it isn't. It's not truth. It's not truth. Remember that. That way when things are unfolded, when things do unfold to you, right? You're not, you're not just devastated and the entirety of your foundation does not fall apart. And that's going to happen to a lot of people. Listen, people are going to see the true nature of parts of this world. It's going to be enough to give them a heart attack. It will. It will destroy the very foundation of everything they thought they knew. And they're going to be unsure about everything from that point forward. Some people are frightened of having their own theories being disproven because it's all they have left. They hold on to their own personal sanity through their own narrative of what the world is. And if that's ever shattered, they have nothing else to hold on to. As it turns out, the human mind is extremely fragile. It is extremely fragile. Right? Brother Mike, my brother has seen a cloudy being with thousands of eyes. It looked like things he has seen be bizarre. Oh, well, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. But, but, but take note of this. Angels can take the form of anything in creation. They still have certain powers to do certain things. They can. They can take the form of anything. They can take the form of a thunderstorm. They can take the form of, of a tree, of a rock, right? For example, you guys, all of you guys, right? You're going to be all messed up when you find out that rocks are not what you thought they were. You're going to be messed up. That's going to mess you up. And when they start, you know, moving around and floating right in front of your faces, and when they go from one place to another very fast, it's just going to upend a lot of what people thought they knew. The stability of this earth, 
is at stake right now. It's at stake. Many of the properties that are in the earth that have been held back for a long time, right, or subdued, they're not going to be subdued anymore. Remember, God is moving things out of the way. When the restrainer is moved out of the way, things can exercise in their original nature. When that happens, nothing is going to be as you thought it was. And in those days, there are going to be a lot of people who would rather commit suicide than continue to live another day. And the world is going to be very, very confusing. It's going to be very confusing. You're going to find out that most of what you knew, right, was only applicable during a very quiet time when the restrainer was here. The physics are going to change when the restrainer is gone. Physics will change. Not only is, is, is evil being held back, right? But there are properties in the earth that are being held back. Many things are being held back at this present time. But those days are almost over. Somebody said floating rocks like the movies. Yeah, but they kind of, uh, on the ground, they're quite dangerous. Imagine, imagine a boulder, right? You're driving down the road, all of a sudden a boulder, just a boulder, right? Just floats over right where your car is at about five miles an hour and then goes in a circle, right? Like somebody pushed it in a circle and it just plows through everything on its way and never touching the ground. Right, with the, with the jerky movements as though it's being suspended by something. You'll, you'll see things like that. The nature of everything you know is going to change. Who are you going to be then? Who will you be then? When things are not so stable, right? When these false ones come to the scene to say we're helping you survive this time. Will you know your Lord enough to have sturdy roots and faith in him always? Because I'll tell you something. There are subtle things in your life right now that are good to gauge yourself with. The one thing, personally, I'll never do is I am not the expert on what does not exist. You can forget that. I've been wrong so many times about that in my lifetime. I'll never do that again. I am not the expert on what does not exist. Because if you're the expert on what does not exist, you have to know everything that does exist. You know that, don't you? The only way you can say something does not exist is if you know everything that does exist. None of us know everything that does exist. Somebody says, will we see the new land masses? I'm sure you will. In fact, I'm highly confident you will. You will. But then that's going to be, we're not talking about man-made islands either. These are islands they just didn't, nobody can travel to, right? Um, ex certain explorers have landed in these places, but, you know, it's kind of hush-hush. really is. That's how things are. But they won't remain that way. So get yourselves ready is what I'm telling you is get yourselves ready. Don't be the expert on everything and every subject. But keep your eyes on the Messiah. Be ready for God's revelation. And listen, one thing about God's revelation. When he gives it to one, he gives it to all. He'll give it to everybody. If the Lord gave me something to give to you guys, right, and I say it, it's already going to be identified within you so that you can say, amen, there it is, okay. We always do that, right? But if I get something you never, ever had in your life, no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. God said, you know what? The New Testament is so awesome. The Lord said he will, that God will not give something in secret anymore. What he gives, he gives to all of us. All of us. It comes by way of a spirit. And everybody who's a partaker of a spirit, and as he said, my spirit will be poured out on all flesh, not some flesh, all flesh. Right? And he gives by way of a spirit. So that means all of us must have it. Why do I say that? Because number one, he said it. But number two, look at this. Nobody who stands before Christ is going to have an excuse. Not one soul is going to have an excuse. That means everybody, 
knows right from wrong. Everybody was given ample opportunity to change. Everybody had more information than what they led everybody to believe. Some people act ignorant about righteousness, but they're not ignorant concerning righteousness. They just choose unrighteousness. Hmm? Somebody said, uh, Brother Mike, as, as soon as those things appear, shall we get rid of them or how? No, you do, no, you're not. Listen, when those things come out from the bottomless pit, who's going to get rid of them? Nobody. They're under decree of the Most High. Now, we're talking about Apollyon. Apollyon is a king, right? That angel of the bottomless pit. He is their commander. They're doing things by order of the living God. Why? Because it was told to them not to touch any green thing, any tree, or any anybody with the, uh, with the seal of God in their foreheads. They're under the orders of the Most High. The Most High gave them their limitations. He is the one that gave the key to open up the bottomless pit. Apollyon comes out of the pit with those things, and they go and wreak havoc on the earth. And it says, in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. The power that they have is to sting man as a scorpion stings a person and to torment men for five months. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. Death will flee from them. So they're going to torment people who are not sealed by the living God. They're not going to torment the trees. They're not going to torment the grass. They're only going against those men who do not have the seal of God in their foreheads. And that just so happens to be those who do not believe at that time. You can't rebuke them. God gave them their limitations. God did that. You can't rebuke them. They're not coming after the righteous. In fact, in Revelation, you'll never hear of anything being unleashed that's coming after the righteous. You're not going to hear it. Right now, many of you have chosen the Lord. Nothing has come after you. Every problem we have had in our lives, if you seriously think about it, except the assaults in your youth that attempted, attempted to pervert what love was in your life, if you look at everything else, can you tell me you had nothing to do with it? Can you tell me it did not stem from some type of bitterness or persistence doing something you knew you shouldn't have done? Can you tell me you were innocent and received something upon yourselves? Now, we're not talking about when you were abused when you were young or Satan's attempt to make you pervert love itself. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the rest of the stuff. Hmm? My point is, if we can put these things in order and not walk around with excuses and pointing fingers and see what actually took place, you can be empowered. See, we have the words of the Messiah. What did Jesus say? What did he say? Our lives are a direct reflection of the words of Christ. Do you know that? What happens when you're obedient? What happens? The Lord told us what happens. You know that scripture where it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Let me ask you this. Why is it that certain weapons have prospered in your life? Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because if you're under, if you read about the statutes, commandments, and judgments, right? then you know that if you keep the commandments of the living God, and if you perform the statutes, commandments, and judgments that were given, you're going to be blessed. And then you're blessed going into the city and blessed coming out. And then every weapon formed against you shall prosper. And then your enemy is going to come at you one way and flee several ways, right? That's when you're blessed, but you know there are curses. When you're disobedient, you're under the curses. Now, we have grace and mercy. We do. We have grace and mercy. So what does that mean? That means that the curse is not going to consume your life. But it will sting, but it won't consume your life. Right? It's going to hurt sometimes, but it won't consume your life. And most of what we've been going through, see, a lot of people say, well, I, you know, I just can't help myself. I just keep sinning. Go back and read Deuteronomy. That's all you have to do. And then really reflect upon your life and see what has already manifested. 
when a person does that, there's no more excuses. A person will say, oops, well, let me not, let me, let me just, you know, let me get, let me say it clean. The reason I sinned is because I wanted to. Lord, help me with my desires. Should be that true prayer. Lord, help me. I don't know how to give this up. I like it. Right? That should be your true prayer. Most people will, will instruct somebody, well, just pray against it. And they said, nope, because you like it. How can you pray against something when you actually like it? You may like drinking. You may like smoking. You may like doing what you do. And what you have to do is say, Lord, this, look, I know this is not quite cleaning your sight. Help me to overcome it. Help my unbelief. Help the direction of my life. Grant to me obedience. Help me fight these devices of the enemy in my life. That's what the Lord's there for. But when is the last time you asked the Lord for help? Because you absolutely like smoking cigarettes. You absolutely like to drink. You absolutely love the marijuana and the, the, the innocent stick, they're calling it, right? All that good stuff. You absolutely like that. But you know and I know that if a little one sees you doing that and they know that you believe in Christ, you have just authorized that sin in their lives. See, that's what caused me to give up a great many things. You know why? Because the little ones will see it. Do you know what I'll do to protect a little bitty somebody? I'll do anything I can do. And that altered my entire life. See how awesome God is. While everybody else is struggling to do this, that, and the other, the Lord showed me something very simple. Mike, what you do, because you believe in me, and they know you believe in me, you're going to authorize everybody else who sees you to do as a citizen of the kingdom. And then it was almost like a thing came to me, would you defile my kingdom, and would you teach others to do so? No, Lord, I would not. And I'm not going to cause these little ones to stumble by something stupid I'm doing. And so for the sakes of them, and the Lord knows what I would give for the sake of a little one, for a child. For an innocent, for people out there, the Lord knows. And so guess what I did? I gave up so many things for their sakes, I did. And I was very thankful. Had it not been for that, the reason would not have been strong enough. You may think I'm strong, right? A lot of people who know me face to face, they think I am full of faith and very strong. Wrong! It is all because of the Messiah. See, when you really want an answer, then ask him. When you're playing around in the world, ask your neighbor. Start making boastful comments about what you can do under your own power and watch how long you're going to keep what you have. The negative things, right? But by way of love, by way of truth, the Lord will take something, something that, you, that really drives you and show you a simple truth of absolute deliverance. He will demonstrate to you the importance, the importance of why you're here. See, you're important to somebody out there. And guess what? If you go, they're going to be crushed. I had never known that the Lord would, would attach somebody to me, that they would actually need me. You know, I never knew that. Never knew that. Never considered that. And that if I stumble, how can that other person have a chance? In your life, some people don't read the Bible, but they are reading you. And what are you preaching to them? You're not talking to them, but you're living your life. And if they see you do something, you're preaching to them. Why do I say preaching? Because you're living your life. And do you not know that's the loudest most heard ministry you're ever going to have is how you live your life to those around you. They will see everything you do, scrutinize everything you do. You are ministering to them by your truth, which is how you're living your life. Forget about them seeing you in trouble. That's a good thing. Do you know why? Because when you're in deep trouble, and everything looks like it's going to collapse, and they're scoffing you and laughing at you and everything else, if you hang on to your faith and they see that and they see you praying, they start laughing. Oh, look at that person. Mike's still praying over there. Nothing is happening. Oh, they're going to get him this time. 
then the Lord delivers you fully because you never gave up. And they think about it. Wait a minute. This person was under great duress, and yet they continue to pray. This person, in tears, would not give up on the Lord. I want that Messiah. I want that Savior. They'll say, that's what I need in my life. You can talk to a person till you're blue in the face. Should one behold your deliverance? My goodness. They're going to be free that very day. That's kind of ministry we need in the earth. Oh, that's the ministry we do have in the earth. It's just that not too many people understand that they're preaching every single day. You know how, how you have people, some of you know it, you say, I don't understand how this person knows everything I'm doing. How does that person know everything I'm doing? Because God is allowing them to see. They couldn't see you. Unless God had given them eyes to see. They wouldn't know about your personal stuff. They wouldn't know about you. Unless God had given them eyes to know about you. What are you going to do about it? You can break the back of unbelief in somebody's life. By your life. The greatest victory a person will ever have. Is when they see a person struggling. Still believing in the Lord, but it's difficult for them. And things are not coming to them. And it looks like they're going to fail. And their health has gone totally down the tubes. And everything else bad is happening to them. And they're about to lose it all. But then they keep holding on. They're being scoffed at, laughed at, and everything else. And then all of a sudden, without warning, the Lord delivers that person. Whoever sees that, whoever sees that is going to see a miracle. It a miracle beyond any healing, a miracle beyond making a blind man see, a miracle beyond making the lame man walk, a miracle beyond walking on the water. They're going to see a miracle, and they're going to fall to their knees. They're going to desire that salvation because they will have beheld salvation and deliverance. Many of you, you have seen salvation. But you don't know deliverance. And when you don't know deliverance, when things get hard, you become unsure. Why? Because you don't know deliverance. And you don't know deliverance. Why? Because your mind is in trying to get out of the problem. When you know God's deliverance, that's when you stop trying to get out of problems. You're not worried about getting out of a problem because you understand the word. You'll know that God will yet deliver you. But some of you are not acquainted with that. And so when it gets too heavy, you start running. You panic because you don't know if you're going to be delivered. Listen to me. You are to know the deliverance of the Most High. You are to absolutely know it. How do you find that out? How do you change it this time? Because trials and tribulations come for that reason. Stop being afraid of the word tribulation. That's something that just comes in our lives. That's part of how God raises us. To tribulation. To trial. Great trial. We go through a furnace. Jimmy Crack Corn. That's the way God raises us. He raises us in truth. Not in some fictional setting. This is real. The trouble you go through is real. And there are real consequences. But let me tell you something. There's real deliverance. You know how you're hoping to be healed? Hoping to be delivered? Let me tell you what happens when you are delivered. Everything can go wrong. And everything can look like you're not going to be delivered. You know what you'll tell it? Get behind me. That's what you'll tell it. You will not listen to anything that says you will not be delivered because you will know you're going to be delivered. You will know Christ as a deliverer. Some of you know him as Savior, but you don't know him as deliverer. You are to know him like that. And here we are. We think we're ready for the end times. If you don't know deliverance going into the end times, how in the world is anybody going to make it if they don't know what deliverance is? You know, in Revelation, something is revealed in Revelation. It is very shallow, but very heavy. 
And I pray that no one enters into a specific time in the end times and they not know what deliverance is. So listen to me. How does the Lord set you up for deliverance? It's when everything goes wrong. It's when that problem won't go away. It's when the situation does not get better. That's when he sets you up to be delivered. It's when people know of your issue and it aggravates you to pieces. It's when you have been abandoned. It's when people turn their backs. It's when that good situation turns sour. It's when you were found out or she was found out and everybody was found out. It's when you look very bad in the public's eye, in your family's eye. It's when you can't go another step. That's when deliverance comes. Why would God deliver you when nobody's watching? And you're a representative of the kingdom? What would that represent? Absolutely nothing. So he gets you when everybody is watching. If you have ego, if you have pride, and you can't stand the embarrassment, that's going to be revealed too. You've got to get over that. You've got to get rid of the false characterization that we do to ourselves. We make characters ourselves. We don't want our characters to be cast down to the ground. You know what happens? If somebody were to cast me down to the ground in a moment of my calamity, and God's going to deliver me, they would see the entire thing cast me down to the ground. And when God delivers me, they would fall on their faces to the ground. Not to me. No, they would finally cry out to the living God and say, now I know salvation comes from you and you only. See, that gets rid of all the falsehoods. But you know what the Lord said in the Old Testament? Whom shall I send? Who am I going to send? Who am I going to send who's going to go through those fiery trials? In the Bible, it also said, think it not strange to go through fiery trials. Why are people so frightened of that? It's because they don't know deliverance. That's why. They don't know deliverance. They're beautiful in other aspects, but they do not know deliverance. The end times. We're here. We're in the end times. There are portions no one should be a part of unless they know what deliverance is. The Lord wants you to know his deliverance before you transition. That should be established before you transition. Before you are translated. Don't take the world's way and run. Don't do it. Stand in righteousness. Right in the middle of the storm. And see the deliverance of the Lord. The time for running is over. You don't have to run from a trial or tribulation. Do you know why? Because they're from the Most High. Mm -hmm. hmm. Somebody said, why does your description of the solar system planet spiraling around the sun mimic the scientists but differ greatly from what Enoch and Baruch wrote? I think people make a big mistake on what Enoch wrote because they didn't read the whole book of Enoch. They didn't read the whole book of Baruch. And they're trying to support an earthly idea. See, take note of this. For anybody who believes in a flat earth, I do not agree with you. For anybody who believes in a round earth, I do not agree with you. I believe in Jesus of Nazareth. I do not believe in the shape of the earth. That offers no salvation for anything. And when it comes to describing something, I have to be an observer. Then I can describe it. I have to directly observe something. Then I'll describe it. I cannot be somebody who saw it from somebody who saw it from somebody and have any confidence in talking about anything passionately. I had to be a witness of certain things before I start talking about it. Have I witnessed seeing other planets and spheres? And Yes, I have. I personally witnessed that, right? But I never get into that conversation. Why? Because it's always speculative. It's one word against the other. There's no ground that can be had with that, right? I don't do that. I don't do that. My, my primary goal here, right, is to assist people as they seek to prepare themselves for what 
is in store for them for the Lord prophesied and in this hour for them to overcome what's been holding them back for all this time. I seek to assist those who are seeking Christ. All the rest of the stuff, right, is a tool. Sometimes those tools are useful. Sometimes I don't talk about the tools at all. That's all. So I, know, I, I never make my conversations about a, a specific position in an argument or debate or something of that nature. Please take note of that. I take no one's side, right? I take what I have witnessed directly, and that's what I utilize. I can't take what somebody else has witnessed and argue their point if I'm not a witness also. I can't do that. I've learned some valuable lessons, and I've been burnt quite a few times by taking other people's positions. That's how. People always do that, don't they? They always talk about the flat, round triangle, right? Concave, how they're oceans connected to the sky the sky and no other planets how we're stuck in an eyeball of a bigger being i've heard that one too the people are living their lives by theories they're doing exactly what the lord said they would do right what did he say he said a time would come when men would no longer endure sound doctrine but would heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears that's what he said they're doing exactly what the lord god said they would do they're coming up with their own narrative their own walk of faith. They're defining everything themselves. They have abandoned sound doctrine which comes from the Holy Spirit. They have abandoned that. See, in the Holy Spirit, we have one voice, one mind, one soul, right? We're talking about one specific subject. We're all on the same page. We don't have a difference of views. We don't have that kind of stuff, not when it comes to the Word of God, right? That's what the Holy Spirit, but separately, all of us are going to have a theory. A different theory about the same thing. Somebody even suggested, they said, well, Mike, everybody has a different, you know, opinion. And it's good for everybody to have a different opinion about, you know, prophecy. And I said, no, it isn't. It's good that people have revelation. The truth. We need the truth, not a theory. We need the truth, not someone's narrative. We need the truth. Because we're in the time where people call good evil and evil good, right, wrong and wrong, right. The earth is utterly turned upside down. It is surely waste. Even now it is. Even now it's waste. Somebody said, were you behind the door? I was given an opportunity, but I chose not to. Behind the door was utter darkness. I was way behind the door. Way behind the door. That's why I'm so passionate about that message of deliverance. Not one soul can tell me God will not deliver them. Did I take part in many of the things they did? No, I did not. But I saw everything. First hand, not second hand. I didn't hear it from someone. Nope, I saw it. I saw it. I had to see it a lot. A whole lot. So Satan can't pull a slick willy on me. That's not going to happen. But if he can, what he will do is turn people inwardly towards themselves. He'll do that. Don't allow him entrance into yourselves. Don't do that. Hmm? Somebody said, is the meteor storm connected to the pole ship? Is Wormwood Revelation a separate event than the meteor storm? Personally, I believe people have their opinion about things, right? The book of Revelation. I went through a Revelation study once and I described a couple of things I really didn't expand on certain areas. I didn't do that. But when I was little, there was an understanding I had of the book of Revelation before I could read anything. I, I could see it. Like, like pictures i could see every time somebody talked about revelation i could see it i could see it i saw a large volcanic body rise up from the sea and it was very violent as it rose and it cracked and it shot all over the face of the earth the entirety of the of the earth was just lit in this ugly color and burnt up from end to end Right? I saw bitterness. That was
was bitterness. That was the word for that volcano was bitterness. And it was big, but you could also see others rising up at the same time. It was bitterness. And in Revelation 8, when you read it, it says, I saw a great mountain, as it were a great mountain, right? There are terms in Revelation that when you take back to the Kano Greek or the Greek, you start to see something like, for example, something being ejected out of the water versus something falling out of the sky. You start to see the differences, right? And every time I start doing that, I've learned to trust what the Lord gave me well before I ever interacted with anybody. Just like in your lives, many of you have had dreams and visions. Before you got serious about the Lord, you saw some things that cannot be disputed. You saw things prior to being exposed to conversations in the Bible. You saw things, right? Normally, the Lord will do this to give you an anchor point, right? So before you get into conversations about the Word of God with everybody else, before that time of your life took off, the Lord showed you things. You had a knowing within you, and it was beyond your own comprehension. You didn't, you didn't, in other words, he gave you things that nothing influenced but him. He, he allowed you to see inside subjects before you were ever exposed to the subject. Because most people say, well, maybe I dreamed that because I saw this movie and because I heard this guy and because this. Well, what the Lord does is he will give you a snapshot before any of that starts. So you'll always end up going back to what the Lord gave you originally. And you'll say, my goodness, I, I can't deny it because he gave me that prior to anything. Right? When TV was still in black and white, I could see that volcano rising up from the waters before I had understanding of geology. Of any of that stuff, I could see the darkness in the sky. I could hear the pain of men in my ears. I could see the redness of the hue of everything. I could see dead animals. Things were dying. It was ugly, dark, and bad. And bitterness. The two words that were there were bitterness and anointing. The whole earth was... I remember telling my mother that about that specific dream and I said is the earth going to be anointed by uh, lava is it going to be anointed by lava that's what I saw there's also something else in Revelation when it says the four angels held back right they held back the, everything of the earth that you right you might want to know that for fact, time is probably not what you think it is. Time can be halted by angels. It can be halted. You continue, but time can stop. Do you know you're not in relationship to time? Just so you want to, you know how these time, these um, these uh, movies about time, where time speeds up and time goes back. And do you know you're not? You're not in a relationship with time, just so you know that. If time stopped, you would keep going. Do you know that? You would. Those of you who belong to Christ, you would. You would. You would. It wouldn't affect you. Time is, time is not governed like you would think it would be governed, right? Which is why... Gravitational anomalies are going to mess people up on the earth and time dilations are going to really mess people up on the earth. Imagine you losing a week. Imagine you're sitting around, you're talking to your friends and stuff, right? You drive down the road, you get to your destination and somebody says, where have you been for the last week? And you say, what, are, what do you mean? I've been driving. You look down at your car, right? And it just drifted somewhere. It's out of gas and everything else. It's condensation all over the place or something like that, right? You'd be all messed up, wouldn't you? You'd be all messed up because a week would be gone. Now, imagine that happening to everybody everywhere. And the only thing that's affected are things around you, not you. 
just things around you. What would you think about time then? Imagine the true time experiments when they do their little differences of time in CERN. When they found out that humanity is not bound to time changes. Humanity is not a stone. Humanity is not a tree. Humanity is not an animal. Humanity operates in a different set of properties than everything else. That would really mess you up, wouldn't it? Now, you probably never heard that anywhere before. You might now, because I'm not the, there, there are others out there, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Humanity is just not governed by time like everything else. See, that, that throws out into the garbage can quite a few theories, doesn't it? Humanity is not governed by time. If time changes, humanity will not. Boy, that just messed up everything, didn't it? Nobody in their right mind would believe me. They wouldn't. Why? Because they say, hey, you're, you're trying to do away with Jules Verne's work. That's what they'd say. Yep, too bad. If you belong to Christ, you're not governed by time. is uh, just not a factor to you. It'll affect everything around you, not you. So if everything stopped, you would keep going and imagine something. Imagine the four angels hold back the four winds on the earth, that nothing stir up on the earth. Imagine everything stops but you. And when everything stops, also the sensations in your body stop. That you're able to do just about anything in that moment. Do you guys know what I used to say a lot here in COT? It's actually written down hundreds of times. Not in one place, but all over the world. It says, when the four mighty men who expelled the Nephilim hold back both fires and winds, that nothing stir up on the earth. The designated tribes of the earth will take flight. Do you know that? Now, I probably didn't get that verbatim, but I gave you the gist of it. That's exactly what it says. Now, how? What? First of all, why do they mention the four mighty men who 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 expelled the Nephilim? That sounds like Enoch talking, right? And why does it say they hold back both fires and winds that nothing stir up on the earth, day or night? Or to say day or night, dark or bright, nothing stirs upon the earth until the designated tribes of the earth take flight. That's what it says. Now imagine a time when another exodus takes place. But this time, nothing can move. Nothing can interfere. No wind can blow on you. No fire can reach you. You walk right through the flames, hot lava, whatever it is. You just walk right through it. Until you reach a specific place, not feeling no discomfort, doing anything, just, you know, prancing along. Everybody who knows the Lord, then you meet, you're, you're part of a transitional thing. Huh? And think of that. And in Revelation, it, it says that, doesn't it? You might be surprised to know that that same thing has happened. More than a few times, document it. See, the CIA and the FBI and all these guys are having fun releasing these papers to people. And for the most part, they're releasing the papers that will empower you to go into zones of reality you shouldn't be in. You should not ever do it. Right? But they won't tell you that. They're trying to get you to do astroplaning. They're trying to get people who know about electronics because they know people know how to work microcontrollers to tune light bulbs and to get a sound generator to do a specific thing in stereoscopic uh, uh, type of uh, pattern because they know the brain is going to put you in a delta, a, a quick delta pattern, and you're going to start going off into Lululand, right, which means you'll detach from your body. But what you won't know is if you ever detach from your body, Something else will attach to it. Darkness will attach to it. And then you're going to end up with a duality and a problem. See, because when you seek those fascinating things like that, you're under the instruction of something you don't know about. I was about to say, you know not what, right? You could be under the instruction of Satan himself. Now, nobody would do a, a part of an incantation or something like that, but that is actually part of a ritual. And by people doing this at home, they're actually entering, entering into a ritual, is what they're doing. They're doing exactly what witches and warlocks have done for thousands of years. 
right there in the documentation that's been declassified is the exact same thing these satanic worshipers perform. They do that as they initiate a duality, which is to live your life with a demon inside you. Anyway, folks, how in the world did I talk all this time? Did I take a break? I didn't take a break, did I? I didn't take a break. It's Robin's fault. I didn't see Robin anywhere. I can't see. I didn't see COT, period. Actually, the screen went on. Oops. Okay, anyway. Hold on, everybody. Oh, let's keep seeing an update this. Somebody says, Mike. I'm terrified my 70-year-old granddaughter will hurt herself or worse. She has accepted Christ, but I fear she won't turn to him in faith. Somebody says they're afraid of their granddaughter, won't turn to Christ in faith. Listen to me. Please hear me on this. Each individual must make that choice for themselves. Scared or not, right, you can pray for her. You can, but each individual must make that choice for themselves. Now, this, is, this part's very important. Instruct her by everything you do for the rest of your life so that you will have exhausted everything you know how to do. Leave nothing undone. All right? Remember something. Everybody must make the choice for themselves. They must. God will afford every opportunity by Christ Jesus to, to, to make a person aware of where they truly stand by way of righteousness, right, or darkness. But it's up to the individual to choose. But I would encourage you to do everything you can do by way of living your life. Do everything in righteousness that you're able to do to a sister by way of demonstration. Your responses to things, the way you handle issues, that means if you haven't done it, go back into the word strong. Make sure you fortify your own foundations and do everything in righteousness according to the Lord as though you have just stepped foot into the kingdom of God. By doing so, you actually go to war against negative powers that would seek to, to, to have her follow darkness. Combat them immediately by your own righteousness and submission unto the Lord Jesus. Do that, right? That means these things that we wrestle with, settle them. Settle them in righteousness. Be an asset to the kingdom for her sake, right? Do that as fast as you can. When a child is in trouble like that, they're around you and they trust you. You become the instrument of demonstration for them. That's an opportunity for a person to do everything in righteousness. You know how we say we die for our children, right? Then don't die literally, but die to everything that would be unrighteousness for their sakes. And the Lord is just to do exactly what he said he would do. Take note, it was Pharaoh. God changed the heart of Pharaoh. He hardened his heart. So that Pharaoh would not let the people of the living God go when Moses said, let my people go. Pharaoh said no. Pharaoh said no because God hardened Pharaoh's heart to say no. That he could demonstrate in view of his own people who he was. He did that on purpose. God can change hearts the opposite way too. Remember that. Now I give you this. If somebody belongs to the Lord, they will ultimately be with the Lord. There, there are many lessons a person will learn here in this earth, right? But if somebody belongs to the Lord, if they truly believe in Christ, Jesus is the one that said, and it was written of him, all who come to me, the Father hath given me, and I will in no wise lose, and I will raise him up the last day. Those are the words of our Lord. So if somebody truly believes in Christ, they truly believe in him, Jesus will raise that person. He'll work with that person here. They belong to him. They're going to go through many trials. But understand, if they truly believe in him, they will not be lost. 
They will not. Hmm? Remember that. Please remember that. Folks, we're at the end of our thing here. I didn't take a break. My apologies. My apologies. Folks, you guys be blessed. We have more days coming up on the KD Files. All you guys should be able to access that. I'll put that in the public domain so you don't have to do that. I'm going out with the calendar here shortly. And as some of you have found out, they, they've been pretty, uh, some of the days have been pretty close here. We have a, we have a big quantity of days coming out that are quite important. Somebody says, is duality a demonic occupation by a demonic possession? It's when a person agrees to have a demonic entity with them. That's what it is. If you detach, um, from your body, so to speak, right? Something else is going to step in. That is part of a ritual for a duality, right? Like skull and bones, they do the same thing. Skull and bones does it. The Egyptians did it. Uh, quite a few other people did it. I know that people are, they glorify the Egyptians these days, right? And Thoth and all these other uh, numbrains, they do that these days. Father, forgive me, I'm not going to insult these guys. Why? Because Moses, when he, when they were disputed about the body of Moses, he durst not bring accusation upon Satan, but except he said, the Lord rebuke thee. So anyway, people glorify the Egyptians and things in these times. But um, when you detach from your own body like that, right, that's a rejection of your body, actually. And that's part of a ritual. That's what it's for. Once your connection is weakened to the body, you can actually get stuck out there. You can. Now, a person who is of the Lord is, is, why would they ever seek to do that? What are they looking for? See, if you really belong to Christ, you're going to be looking for Him. Only those people who want to explore based upon the information they're given from mankind and other sources are going to venture out beyond the boundaries that they know. They're going into the great unknown thinking they're explorers. Hate to tell them we're wrapped in a bubble. There's some pretty bad things outside of this bubble. The entirety of the earth is wrapped in a bubble. The only way through that is with the power of God. That's the only way. But that's another conversation. Hmm? Folks, God bless and keep all of you. Somebody said, my dad said it's true. Astral projection is risky. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can't go in straight lines. You do that, you're done for. Folks, I'm going to see you guys next time right here at the Council of Time. All right? Well, we'll uh, maybe I'll come on tomorrow before past ball. We can answer some questions. But God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at the Council of Time, okay? God bless.